Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Curry. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture at Iowa State University, an extension specialist in greenhouse and controlled environment crop production with Iowa State Extension and Outreach. This eGrow instructional video is going to cover a few different methods of measuring alkalinity in your irrigation water. Why are we concerned about alkalinity? First, it has a large impact on our water quality. The alkalinity is the buffering capacity of water to resist change in pH levels. So the higher alkalinity we have, the harder it's going to be to drop our pH in our irrigation water. High alkalinity in the resulting buffering capacity can often cause our pH to remain high and sometimes make micronutrients unavailable, causing micronutrient deficiencies. Additionally, elevated levels of alkalinity in water can make pesticides and plant growth regulators less active. We're going to cover three different methods for measuring our alkalinity levels in our irrigation water. First, we want to collect a sample of our irrigation water. We want to make sure that we have a representative sample. So what I like to do is get my hose, turn it on, let it run a little bit, and then collect the sample in a bucket. I've already filled this five gallon bucket. We'll start with the simplest method for getting a rough approximation of our alkalinity. And you can do this simply by using test strips that are utilized for hot tub and pool water maintenance. These strips will test for things like pH, chlorine levels, as well as alkalinity. While they're not precise, they can give you a rough estimate of the alkalinity in your water. To perform this test, we simply take a test strip, dip it in our representative irrigation water solution, and wait 15 seconds in order to let any color changes take place on the strip. Once 15 seconds has passed, we can take our strip and we compare it to the color chart on the back of the bottle. We can see here that alkalinity, the second tab from the bottom, is somewhere between zero and 40 parts per million based on the colors. Again, this is only a rough guideline using a color metric determination of alkalinity. Let's look at a more precise way to measure our alkalinity. The next method that we're going to use utilizes a little alkalinity meter. First, we turn the alkalinity meter on. Once we see that it's blinking and says C1, we're ready to insert our first sample to calibrate the meter. Open up the meter. Then we take a cuvette and we're going to add approximately 10 milliliters of water up to this white line. Once we've got 10 milliliters of solution in this tube, we're ready to put it inside of the meter. Place it in, close the top, and hit the button. This will calibrate or zero the meter. Once it's blinking again, it's ready for the next step. Open it up, remove your sample, take the cap off the sample, and add one milliliter of our reagent, which is again going to make a color metric determination of alkalinity. We take our syringe that's provided with the kit, and we draw one milliliter of the reagent, adding this to our sample. Place the cap back on, place it in the meter, close the lid, and hit the button again. Now it's going to determine our alkalinity. You can see here it's reading 35. This is going to be a more precise measurement compared to those test strip kits, which was giving us a value somewhere between zero and 40 based on the color metric range. Finally, the most precise method of measuring alkalinity is to submit your sample to a professional lab. While it costs a bit more, this is going to be the most precise way to get an alkalinity measurement. We simply take 
a clean plastic bottle, remove the lid, submerse the bottle to fill the sample, and when you're covering it, keep the bottle underwater when you put the cap on. This will allow you to eliminate any airspace or headspace in your sample jar. Remove your jar and it's ready to be submitted to a commercial lab. These three different methods of testing alkalinity are going to range in both cost and precision. For the test strip kits, costs around $10 for the entire jar of strip kits, but it doesn't give you a precise value. The meters can run from $40 to $75 and give you a better, more accurate reading. And finally, a commercial sample, when submitted to a lab, may cost between $20 to $40 per sample, but is going to be the most precise measurement of alkalinity in your irrigation water. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you've learned how you can test alkalinity in your irrigation water. Thanks for watching another eGrow instructional video.